Well, there's a team of, of 10 embryologists in there. They're a fantastic team. They're very dedicated to what they do. Um, you know, and it becomes all about the patient. I think it's a centre of hope for people. Um, and it's been around a long time and we see, you know, there's, there's kids now that are, that are 17, 18, you know, um, that have, have come from Harry. And that's just wonderful. It's just wonderful to see what you've given couples. It's truly, truly wonderful. Our role as an embryologist is to make the embryo, convince the embryo that it has never left the uterus. So we need to keep it in the dark, we need to keep it warm, we need to give it the right nutrients and we need to sort of make sure its environment is optimal and that's really our role to look after them as best that we can. There are three options effectively that we offer here. One is IUI, which is an intrauterine insemination um, where we prepare the sperm and introduce it into the uterus at the most appropriate time in the cycle. The next level up then is what we call standard IVF, where we would add maybe 50 to 100,000 sperm to the eggs in a dish in the hope that nature will take its course and fertilization will happen. If we suspect that there's a problem with fertilization or if we see very clearly that there's a problem with the semen analysis, that the count is low, we can then physically inject the sperm into the egg to maximize fertilization and that option is called ICSI. Um, we only have a certain window in which we must assess fertilisation, so that's usually 16 to 20 hours after we've inseminated. So that's our job to come in next morning and see how many of the eggs are fertilised. From this point on we really sort of take over contact with you. We talk to you after your egg collection just to tell you how many eggs we have, the quality of the sperm, and then we then talk to you all pretty much on a daily basis giving you an update. Embryos should develop over a certain rate of time, so that's one of our jobs to select out if they're not developing the way they should be, if we see they're not dividing the way they should be. Um, an embryo, a nice four cell embryo, you should see nice four clear cells of equal size. Sometimes you might see that one's larger or smaller than the other or there can be some fragmentation. So that's our role to comment on all of that. One of the big things about what we do is that, you know, for other research, you might find out your result in a week's time or two weeks time. For us, we really need to see babies that have been born and are born healthy and that those kids grow up and they're still healthy and hopefully by the time they get their own reproductive age, everything is still okay. So anything that we change, we have to think very much long term. Things can go wrong. I mean, we can have fantastic eggs that look absolutely perfect on the microscope, a great sperm count, and we can put them both together and nothing happens, which obviously is devastating for the couple. You know, as scientists, this, this you know, upsets us because we look and we think, yeah, we think this is a good prognosis. We think this is a really good chance of working. This couple, you know, it looks good. Um, and then you get the other couple and they think, you know, this isn't looking great. You know, the, there's maybe just one embryo. It's not looking good. They only had one. And it works for that couple. So sometimes it's really, you know, quite an inexact science that we do. And that's kind of reassuring too. We only assist nature. We don't control it.